Sukuna from Abhibindu Wellness Foundation. And we have a very exciting webinar today with Sonia Bareja on mindfulness. Before we start the webinar, let me just introduce Abhibindu Wellness Foundation to you all. Abhibindu Wellness Foundation is a not-for-profit organization that brings you experiences that support your physical and emotional well-being. We curate programs that help align your body, mind, and soul, providing a platform that creates awareness about ancient and modern spiritual sciences, energy healing, natural and holistic traditional knowledge through talks, workshops, events, and retreats, and webinars. Our objective is to promote holistic well-being, natural healing, mindfulness, personal growth, learning, and development. A little bit about Sonia. Sonia Bareja is an educator, storyteller, and mindfulness practitioner. She is an incisive professional with 20 years of varied experience as an entrepreneur, educator, come counselor, storyteller, wellness coach, and mentor, and a sales and marketing professional. She's an internationally accredited mindfulness practitioner alongside she also conducts sessions on sexuality and wellness with children and parents. A very warm welcome to you, Sonia, and a very warm welcome to all those who have joined us today. So Sonia, we, uh, let me just put this question across to you. We hear a lot about mindfulness. We hear a lot about meditation. There is a confusion in all our minds. Are they the same things? or are they entirely different? Wow, uh, this is a beautiful question. But before we get on to answering and the session, I would like to take a quick uh, second to thank Abhibindu. Thank you so much for to the entire team of uh, Abhibindu, Mamta and everybody, and all the participants who have taken out this special time for, uh, you know, this is this I call as a me time. You know, we all as women, as human beings do a lot of things for others. But, you know, you have taken out time and a special thank to Abhibindu for uh, organizing this wonderful uh, evening for all of us. So congratulations and a big gratitude for giving me this opportunity. I'm totally humbled. Now, coming to your interesting question, Mamta, that mindfulness and meditation, yes, they are interchangeably used by many of us. But let me tell you that there is a stark difference between the two. Meditation, as they say, uh, is more of a process. It's more like a journey we all want to embark on. Mindfulness is a step towards that journey. Meditation, as they say, is uh, channelizing awareness. Mindfulness is cultivating that awareness in simple terms. And let me just tell you this with a small little example. What do you think? Why do you think I'm holding this bulb? Can anybody unmute and tell me why do you think I'm holding this bulb? Well, I'm trying to figure out uh, how to increase the voltage of this bulb. So my question is, how do I increase the voltage of this bulb? Anyone? I see Kalpana unmuting herself. Yes. Okay. It's a very easy question. Bachman mein humne physics mein six ya seven class mein padha tha kabi. So okay, I'll make it easier. How do I increase the voltage of this bulb? There are only two ways. One, either I increase its capacity, or I increase the supply of the current to increase the voltage. Now, mindfulness is exactly like this. Mindfulness is exactly enhancing our voltage. Mindfulness is enhancing our physical, spiritual, and emotional reverberance. It enhances our awareness around our present moment. And therefore, it makes us more effective. It makes us more productive. Wow, beautifully explained, Sonia. Yeah, thank you. So, Sonia, um, how would you like to take this session further? Would you like to share some uh, information, experiences? Perhaps some of the people may not have got the message about what they need to keep with them through this session. So it's a good opportunity to perhaps remind some of those people who have
can uh, get uh, if you can now get a candle and a matchstick uh, with a little plate and a glass of water ye do teen cheeze aapko apni kitchen mein aaram se agar mil jati hain to matlab aap agar turant la sakte hain if you can get them like just in next 20 seconds or if you can just shout out to somebody uh, your daughter uh, any domestic help or any uh, you know your son or anybody uh, we just need a little candle any candle even a birthday candle will do and don't worry if you don't have if you thinking ki mere paas to candle hi nahi hai kya karenge don't worry absolutely don't worry yeah. so are we good to go uh, mamta can we start Totally, we are absolutely good. To okay, great. So, uh, uh, like I was saying, that mindfulness is basically an outcome. It's not a process. Like meditation is a process where we all have heard of soham meditation, uh, kindness meditation. We also have heard of mantra meditation, and some people are equipped to do tantra meditation as well. Mindfulness is the outcome. It's not a process like that. Uh, you know, in 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 meditation, we need quite a space we need a regime we do it for 15 minutes or 50 minutes mindfulness is basically the power of being in the present in that moment so practically speaking we can be mindful while i'm talking to you or if you're sleeping or if you're reading if you're driving if you're talking on phone anything mindfulness has emerged like a buzzword from uh, last couple of years uh, only but let me tell you it has been in the practice since millennia the benefits of mindfulness practicing has been proven worldwide and it has been proven that by practicing mindfulness techniques the quality of life beca- life becomes better uh, our focus is increased we become more compassionate and the stress is reduced and this is the reason why fortune 500 companies and elementary schools so from fortune 500 companies to elementary schools everywhere mindfulness techniques are practiced now the only reason why these practices or these techniques gets brushed away is because of uh, our i don't have time i'm in a hurry i can't spend 10 minutes on myself because of this trap now what if i told you that the benefits of mindfulness uh, can be achieved can be obtained by practicing for as little as maybe 30 seconds you might just say that oh sonia has gone a little uh, mad in monsoon season it's not like that you know the famous um, uh, mindfulness coach phil has given us this interesting technique called 3 by 3 and that is only for 30 seconds now what this 3 by 3 technique is you need to observe around you just look around yourself and observe three objects any three objects for example if i were to look around i have this paper with me i have my phone and i have this laptop in front of me these are the three objects that are like right in front of me if i were to observe now what you have to do with these three objects is say one one object and inhale exhale which means that when we look observe and choose three objects the only thing that you have to do is you don't have to link the uh, description to it like you can't say this is my favorite phone or this is my favorite stool or i love this laptop no it's just this is a laptop that is a phone this is a paper now how do you practice mindful breathing with this you say this is a paper close your eyes this is a paper that is a laptop this is a phone simple was it simple now in zoom calls because you all are on mute and i can't see all of you so what you need to do is if you understand and if you're happy with something you show me like this you don't have to unmute yourself you just show me your thumbs up but if you don't like something and if you're very unhappy and if you're not getting that point feel free to put your thumbs down if you're ecstatic about something that wow i'm delightful with this then you can say this this is the zoom way of 
showing your or expressing yourself. All right, are we good to go? Yes, I can see a lot of thumbs ups. Brilliant. Now, going back to where we were that talking about three by three. So this is the most easiest technique and don't rub it off or don't brush it away by saying, oh, I don't think this will help because this has been proven, tried and tested three by three technique. And it takes less than 30 seconds, but it makes you extremely mindful. Now, to make you understand it even further, let me teach you this with a small exercise and a little story because Mamta introduced me as a storyteller as well. So, ek kahani to zarur banti hai. So, uh, we all have heard of the term bhakti, which is simply the act of devotion. Now, bhakti or the act of devotion, what we are going to see in a while is something which we experience. But for that, I'll have to share my screen because um, just give me a sec. Oh, I can't see my share screen button. Just a second. Uh, Bharti, am I the co-host? Yes, you are, Sonia. Yeah, just a second. Okay, so uh, can you all see the screen? Okay, great. And uh, so we were talking about bhakti, the act of devotion, uh, which is the most simple, in fact, simplest tool to live in the present mindfully. And uh, to understand it even further, let me just share, you, uh, share with you a small story. It's a story about a wise man named Diogenes he lived in ancient Greek and he was very wise. Lots of people would come to meet him. And once Alexander the Great came to meet him. At that time, Diogenes was uh, taking his sun bath or he was sitting against the sunlight when Alexander the Great came and stood in front of him, hiding a big chunk of the sunlight. He looked at Diogenes and asked him, Mr. Diogenes, I've heard a great deal about you. Is there anything I can do for you? Now Diogenes opened his eyes and looked at him. Mm, well, if you can just excuse me and move a little, you're hiding my son. And upon hearing this, Alexander felt like a beggar. At that moment, he just left and he reached his palace and he told all the men around him that if he were not Alexander the Great, he would love to be Diogenes. Now this little episode or anecdote tells us that there are two types of people. Type one, like Alexander the Great, who seem to be so powerful from inside, but basically empty from inside. Type two, people like Diogenes, who seem to be not having much from outside, but from inside, their heart is full of devotion. Their heart is full of abundance. Their heart is full of gratitude. You must be wondering because devotion does not necessarily have to be for God. Devotion can be practically for anybody. It could be for work, could be for your spouse, could be for your children, could be for your parents. A devotee simply uses this as a tool to get dissolved and to give away something which is bigger than the self. For example, we all, most of us uh, uh, have seen mothers. Mothers are true devotees to their children. Because for them, children comes the first. And when they dissolve themselves for the liking of their children, they don't expect anything from their children. That's the true act of devotion. And that's what explains mindfulness that we need to be in that moment, in that 
moment of now, in that moment of present. With this, let's just do a small activity. I'll just play a little music piece here and you need to close your eyes for two minutes and observe. I'm going to play the music on the beats of the music. You need to close your eyes, observe. And when you open your eyes, please unmute yourself and share your reflection on five things. What are those five things? One, on what did you observe? Two, what did you see? Two, what did you hear? Three, what did you smell? Four, what did you feel? And five, what did you taste? These five things sound familiar. Does it sound familiar? What are these five things? Okay, oh, can you unmute yourself? Can someone unmute? Would someone like to answer this question? Yes, I can see Garima's hand going up. He smell. What are these five senses, senses ma'am? Five, five senses. Five senses. Yes, five senses. Absolutely correct. So this activity, what we are going to do just now, is basically awakening of our five senses to teach us to be more mindful, to teach us to be understanding or to learn how to live in the present. So if everybody is ready, I'm going to play the music, close your eyes for two minutes, observe, and then we will spend a minute or two in few reflections. Okay, great. So let me just, yes, let me put everybody on the grid. And we need to hear from a couple of you to uh, share a few reflections, maybe for next. Maybe we can take two or max three people. All you have to do is share with us your reflections about what did you observe with respect to five senses? May I, Garima Segal? Yes, sure, please go ahead. Yeah, hi. So yes. I felt, uh, you know, I was walking on the ocean bed 
Uh, like the one white second, uh, one second, Garima. Can can I please ask yeah. you to switch on your camera? Yes. Yep. Thank you. So, so I was on the ocean bed, the white ocean bed with serene ocean, and uh, it was like a longing. It was like an echo, a longing, and uh, I felt thirsty, and I was at peace, but there was a massive longing for more, and I was on a quest, on a journey. Very nice. So you observed, you saw beach, you tasted thirst because then your saliva must have come because you were thirsty yes. and, um, and anything in particular you felt in terms of uh, touch? The grains, the sand the under, under my feet, you know, because I was, the sand was pristine white and the sea was calm and I was like, uh, you know, I was being led and I was being pulled in into that i wonder if you could share the notes of this music because it was like enveloping me it was beckoning me so i'd like oh, to go more into it don't don't worry you all of you each one of you will be welcome uh, to get in touch with abhibindu because they are coming up with a interesting four week session this is just an introduction of what we have in store for each one of you but garima Thank you so much for sharing this uh, wonderful reflection with all of us. Uh, and well, you know, in mindfulness practices, there is ju just nothing right or wrong. There is just nothing. I'm no, not right judging or wrong. it. I just felt yeah. that I wanted to go deeper. You know, like wow. I just felt that I wanted to go more, more yes. into it. Yes. And you never know what is in store for you. You never know what is there because if you observed in just one and a half minute, precisely one minute, 48 seconds, uh, if you observed the quest for more, uh, it definitely speaks a lot. But thank you so much, Garima, for sharing your Pleasure. Uh, very, very pious and very sacred reflection with us. Uh, anyone else? Pleasure. So yeah. when, okay, we have Uma Mehra's hand going up. Yes, Uma, please. Uh, Uma, you need to unmute yourself, please. Yes. Okay. Yes. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> it was very overwhelming. I mean, I couldn't believe. I was full of gratitude. I was in a church. Uh, all I felt was um, uh, the abundance that I have in my life. And I was crying. Okay. In these <laughs> one and a half, I, I have tears. Um, it moved me and it made me realize what all I have uh, with, within me and I'm not valuing it. Okay. That's fine. Is there anything you, uh, you, uh, uh, I had to share with respect to, you had goosebumps. I so the, goosebumps. the touch, the touch and the feel was on, uh, that, that factor. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Is and there the emotions, anything? uh, emotions, uh, yeah, you said that you were, it was overwhelming and you felt very, very overwhelming. Uh, in like, compassionate, yeah, you felt compassionate yeah, about I felt, I, no, I felt gr uh, gratitude. Gratitude, very nice. Yes, tremendous gratitude. Great. Great, thank you so much, Uma, for this uh, sacred thought and reflection of yours. Thank you so much. Yeah. And lots of people are very actively writing in the chat. I'm so sorry. I, won't, I, I will read all these chat uh, comments because they're being saved at uh, the server. Uh, is there one more who, uh, we, we can easily take one more. Uh, there's Garima Mishra whose hand is going up. Okay, Garima, go for it. Yeah, hi. So I, uh, I just observed that uh, there is a calm river and uh, I'm sitting with my husband in like very much peace and I felt the cool breezes and uh, it was very nice. And as per taste, it was uh, neutral. Neutral. So, you taste neutral, tha, observe, seeing me, you saw the beach, no, and obviously it was, it was just a river. It was river. A calm you river. saw yeah. a calm river and you heard the sound of the river. And, yeah, it was uh, very it, calm. It was not flowing very, uh, like, yeah. And I'm just sitting with my husband and uh, we are in, like, very much peace. Okay. And I can feel the smell of, like, uh, after the rain, grass wala smell. Yes. So I felt that. Yes. Can I see? Uh, okay, that, that should be the last one because we have to cover up the agenda. I know you all can feel, please feel free to write on the chat. But yes, one, we can quickly take one more. Who said, can I 
say suman 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 suman, suman ji you might have to open your camera yes switch on okay. yeah yeah and then rest of all of you please feel free to share your reflections in the chat please yes suman ji i yes. felt as if i'm on the waves and water is falling on me and i'm very happy in singing with that lady <laughs> okay 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 that's that's great but thank you so much uh, garima suman uh, uma and garima for uh, sharing these sacred and very very personal reflections with all of us uh, but let me tell you when we do this exercise called quiet fight uh, this is the most simple way we can practice mindfulness this is the most simple and shortest duration of uh, a technique that we can give to ourselves or we can invest in ourselves it takes just 2 to 1 and a half minutes to sit in anywhere you're in office you're in your workspace you're in school you're in kitchen you don't need a yoga mat or a proper room or you don't have to switch off the lights nothing all you have to do is close your eyes and observe and just imagine uh, everybody who shared did not share that i heard the sound of the fan or i heard the sound i heard the sound of the birds or i saw uh, uh, my uh, cook making the food no you just went into somewhere else so maybe there is this deep divine intervention or a hidden need or like garima ji said that uh, i wanted to find more i wanted to go to the quest it could be anything but when we practice it regularly then we become more mindful then we become more aware of where we are of what what we are doing what is holding us in the next few moments i'm going to take you through another beautiful exercise which is called body scanning has anyone ever done this before okay so you are going to really be on this beautiful journey and it's called body scanning and we again recommend this as a guided mindfulness practice you need to just activate your auditory for this we all understand auditory our listening because you will keep your eyes closed for next 5 to 7 minutes i'm going to play the music and i'm going to also instruct this time like in the last exercise where we were doing quiet five and we were doing it to awaken our senses this one is to scan our overall body from head to toe it's as if you will feel that your body is in that scanning machine remember when we go to the mall or a cinema we put our handbags and the phones in the scanning machine and we can see everything or the airport so it's exactly like this are you ready for this are you ready to experience the body scanning great you all have got the instruction so well absolutely so i'm going to switch on the music and like i said activate your auditory because i'll be giving instructions also this time listen to the instructions carefully and keep following them you don't have to get up from your uh, place if you're standing it's fine if you're lying down great my only request is if you can open your cameras that'll be great because it will be nice to see uh, the faces you know hum log bade takleef ke time mein hai abhi zoom pe baith ke call karna pad raha hai abhi bindu has the world's best location i and mamta knows it that i love the space she has if you haven't seen the space you have to it's like she lives in heaven you know and the best part is she she makes it open for people you can register and be a you know uh, be there in that space unfortunately we have to do this session from our rooms so ek choti si cheez hum kar sakte hain ki hum apne cameras on kar le even if you're in your pajamas or t-shirts it's absolutely okay matlab shorts mein hai pajamas mein hai t-shirts mein hai it's absolutely okay but shaklein dikhni chahiye usse ek motivation aata hai facilitator ko mujhe acha lagega aapko bhi acha lagega imagine agar main session mute karke aur oh sorry camera off karke kar raha hu to maza nahi aayega na yeah i love the audience everybody has switched on the camera thank you so much and keep the cameras on now so are you ready now show me your big thumbs up yes absolutely i'm just going to share screen for the music 
uh, one sec. Just give me a second. I don't know why is this not playing now. Activate your auditory. I'm going to instruct now. Just as an observer, like someone who's watching it from a distance. Allow yourself to hear few of the sounds that surrounds you. Sounds from the nature, from your bedroom from your kitchen, any sound, pleasant or unpleasant, doesn't matter. Observe just the sound. Observe just the sound that you can hear. How is the fragrance? How is the smell in the space you're in right now? Inhale deeper to observe if there's any fragrance around you. Is your body comfortable? Imagine yourself that you're getting into a scanning machine. And the machine is scanning you from head to toe to see if you're comfortable, your knees, your feet, your elbow, your neck. Is there any part of your body feeling any pressure? Witness few areas of your body and see how you feel your breath in these areas. Inhale and feel your breath in these areas. Your toes, your knee, your feet, your ankle, your shoulders, your neck, everywhere. And lastly, just inquire. Are you your 100% companion? Are you in your company? Are you close to yourself? And if you feel distant, feel the breath to know who you are. And when you do this, you'll feel closer to you. Let there be no distance between you and your breath. One last time, take a deep breath. Inhale and feel closer to yourself. Slowly, at your own ease, 
at your own pace. Rub your palms, rub them on your eyes, and you can slowly open your eyes at your ease, at your pace. There's no hurry. Feel the connection. And you can open your eyes. And if anyone wants to share the reflection of how did you feel when your body was being scanned by none other than yourself. Anyone. Maybe we'll just take one because we have a lot of other things to cover. Yes, anyone can unmute and share your reflections of how you felt. Yes, we have Renu Mehrutra ji. Yes. Hi. Yes, Renu ji. Uh, it was totally like relaxed and pain-free body. No thought in the mind. And very peaceful. Very peaceful. Great. Great. And it did really you... helps. Uh, tell me. Did, did you feel the connect between yourself and your breath? That was the most important. Yeah, exactly. Great, great. Without your saying breathe, like it becomes slower, smaller breaths, but yes. then automatically when you instruct, they go deeper. And you know, usually when we start this body scanning, we start with tuck, 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 and exactly. then it starts to come down, tuck, 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 and it tapers down and tapers down and becomes flattened and we don't want to open eyes. When I do this offline, we do this for seven and a half minutes and I have people who just refuses to come out of this. It just goes so deep in you. Thank you so much, Renuji. But I have a lot of people who are writing in the comment section and chat section that yes, they're feeling calm and... Uh, and they're feeling relaxed and it was wonderful. But did you feel good? Did it make you more aware of your breath and more aware of your, your own self? Okay. Garima, if you have any question, then Garima Segal, we can definitely take it. Yeah, we can I take it. I got the wrong vision on the oust, you know, when you said scan automatically, I don't know how I went into an MRI machine. I think that was the, I was on the wrong foot and uh, so I was in an no. uneasy zone all the time. No. So I came out of it quickly. I'm very claustrophobic with space. No issues, no issues. It's, yeah. it's So I do definitely. the scanning with the Reiki way. I can scan the other you and that is a comfortable experience. But this time I went with the body inside an MRI no. machine. No issues, so, no issues, no issues. But this is another easiest way to uh, feel connected to your breath, to feel connected uh, with your presence. And right. that is exactly what mindfulness is all about. Why are we doing these little, little exercises is to basically introduce each one of you uh, to uh, understand the foundation of mindfulness, that what is it that this buzzword mindfulness is all about? Is it only chanting? Is it only taking few beads and uh, rolling those beads? Or is it about finding a quiet space and getting into a trance? So that's the reason why we thought that we will uh, curate this one hour in such a way that we give you a little, little flavor of what is in store when we talk of mindfulness. Okay, now, thank you. Now tell me, uh, do you have the candle with you? Okay. Few of you have the candle. Great. Now, like I said in the beginning, ki agar kisi ke paas candle mombati nahi hai, don't feel disappointed or disheartened ki main ye next activity mein kya karungi. Hume kuch karna nahi hai, hume observe karna hai. Aur observation aapne dekha hai ki hum apne mind se karte hain. Agar hai, to bohot badiya baat hai. It's very good. Nahi hai, to aap sirf visualize karke ye next activity kar sakte hain, which is again another beautiful activity to understand what, what, is, what is it 
what how do we experience mindfulness samajh mein aa gaya ki kya hai now how do i get into the journey how do i start my journey of being mindful to abhi agar aapke paas wo candle hai aur ek plate hai aur matches hai to aap candle ko jala lijiye aur us plate pe rakh dijiye just light the candle and uh, बट केयरफुल हाँ आई डोंट वॉन्ट एनी बडी टू हैव एनी मिस हैपनिंग की वो कैंडल गिर ना जाए और uh, क्योंकि हमें से कुछ लोग बेड पे या सोफा पे वो सेशन कर रहे हैं सो प्लीज बी केयरफुल या सो इफ यू कैन प्लेस इट अगर वो ब्रॉड बेस नहीं है सो इफ इट्स अ स्मॉल कैंडल ओ ग्रेट इफ इट्स अ स्मॉल कैंडल देन वी ऑल नो द ट्रिक वो नीचे से उसको वैक्स थोड़ा सा एक दो ड्रॉप आप वैक्स गिराएंगे तो वो स्टिक हो जाएगी येस आई कैन सी सम नाइस ब्यूटिफुल कैंडल्स येस just uh, observe the candle now if you can observe the candle yes i can see a candle stand uh, that's that's beautiful that's that's really beautiful now what we are going to do is we are going to few observe a few things uh, with this lighted candle uh, all of us feel the presence of the candle and when you observe this lighted candle just feel the presence of the candle just make yourself available and take some part of your awareness to the lighted candle and for the next few minutes like i said we will go slightly metaphoric uh looking at the candle and will ask you or will ponder what is the similarity between us and the candle what is what is common between candle and us and if you understand the metaphoric experience or personalizing the candle we all know that candle also has life candle also has light so there is definite a commonality or a similarity depicted by the candle uh as per mindfulness what they say is we call this little flame as our own awareness so if you look at the flame can you see the flame all of you so call this flame as your own awareness say that it represents my awareness and now you can see the flame flickers it moves here and there it is not stable sometimes it's going to the left sometimes it's going to the right and it is happening because of the external influences and exactly like this our awareness gets influenced by the environment we live in and that's why our awareness also flickers it goes from here and there like they say our mind wanders because that's what is represented by the flame of the candle now blow the candle gently without any you know big force don't don't blow it off try and blow it from a distance give it a little force what did you observe you must have observed that the the candle flame flickered with more force and it started moving it started shaking but as soon as you stop blowing what happened it came back to its normal did it yes you can still use your thumbs ups i know you on the mute so when you stop blowing the candle flame comes back to the normal but let's understand now the difference between the candle flame and our awareness candle flame came back to its normal the moment external influence stopped but as humans we do not come back to our normal self when we face anxiety unpleasant situations or external force we take time now we are not discussing why do we take time or what happens we are just observing we are just kind of assimilating or kind of taking in the reflections of the similarity between the candle flame and us now the last step 
if you have got a transparent glass just cover the candle and observe it for let's say 15 seconds or maybe 10 seconds and you will see something that will happen you will see something that will happen uh, and that something is that the candle flame goes off yes it goes off now why did it go because you gave an external stronger influence the force of the influence was so strong that the candle had to surrender for its survival it felt possessed by the lack of oxygen and it had to surrender but the crux here is that when there was a matter of survival the candle was possessed as humans also when there is a matter of survival we either like to possess or we are possessed to give you a small example to understand this uh, the relation between possession and survival when the lockdown began uh, there was a matter of survival you all remember janta curfew on 24th march it was announced and there was a matter of survival what did each one of us do please share honestly or just raise the thumbs we all went to the grocery outlets and we started possessing we started possessing all sorts of grocery and all sorts of material as if the survival was on a stake so when we practice mindfulness we practice something called as dharana and when we practice dharana we also practice dhyana now what is what is dharana and what is dhyana and how do we take this experiment of candle flame and survival and possession forward these are the techniques or these are the teachings that will happen in our five week program for which you will have to get in touch with abhibindu when are they planning what is the course outline and what is the agenda but i wanted to give you a little flavor of how can we practice and what are the relationships so in terms of dharana and dhyana we need to understand it at a greater length because this is like a huge topic we cannot cover everything in 50 minutes but we can surely take experience like i said in the beginning of the session that it's not in our hands to control what happens but it's definitely in our hands to change the experience of those things so i'm trying to only uh, give you a flavor of those experience or experiences as i would say so there's a question from lena yes lena please go ahead and mute yourself and yes, ask yes yes please please i understood uh, uh, that uh, we all were you know uh, we possessed at that time can you please explain that yeah we the simple it was a simple example that how do we start possessing when it comes to our survival and what is it that it can lead to in terms of practicing mindfulness maybe when we are practicing mindfulness we don't have to possess we don't feel staked at survival issues or a lot of other questions which brings us to the theory of dharana that's exactly what i said that uh, if i'll start talking about dharana i need at least 2 and a half hours because that's the pillar of mindfulness dharana is the pillar of mindfulness and this is the first topic when we do our five week program this is the first topic that we'll talk about and it takes like easily 2 to 2 and a half hours to understand the whole process of dharana so uh, yeah so if it intrigues uh, lena i can't see you your camera is not on maybe uh, but if it intrigues you then it's definitely mm-hmm. meant for you then it's it's definitely meant for you to uh, take it forward understand it forward 
and understand it more i would say and make it uh, you know make it yours and the the five week program that we are talking about uh, mamta i can can i just briefly talk about that i think it's a very good idea okay the five week program that we are talking about is an interesting program uh, which is called train the trainer Mo module now what happens in a in a regular workshop is uh it's a certification program where you get the certification of participation that yes uh sonia bareja participated in this particular program what uh, abhibindu is intending to do in this workshop or in this program is it's a ttt workshop or module where uh you will not only be trained or equipped for your own self but you'll also be given a lot of resource material and you will be given a certification to use those resource material and the techniques forward in your own area of work if you're a teacher if you're a trainer if you're a yoga expert or if you are in any work area if you're even if you're in the corporate you're in the hr practices you're in the finance side or anywhere you can feel free to call yourself as a custodian or a trainer to train other people in your workspace in your family you will be issued a certificate and you will be given a resource material you will be also uh, taught a lot of formative and attitudinal practices now how we are scheduling this is it's a 4 plus 1 uh, week 5 weeks program so basically each participant will pay for 4 weeks and get one week as a bonus and uh, that one week as a bonus will be a week where you will come and showcase your learnings whatever you will learn for four weeks you will pick up the maybe two or three best of those four weeks and showcase so that there is a feedback mechanism and as a part of these four weeks plus one week program there is enough hand holding and every week each participant will be given at least two formative and one attitudinal exercise so that you can practice it before getting equipped whatever you are seeing today as a part of this session is basically a little flavor of what this workshop is going to be about or what these five weeks program is going to be about everything is discussed at length everything will be discussed and taken at a depth and there'll be uh, each session each week will be of 90 minutes uh, and i think uh, the scheduled time uh, the commercials everything you will receive a mail from abhibindu maybe in next one or two days so where we'll cover a lot of interesting uh things now before we close and we get more questions uh, i just have yes yes mamta go ahead yes so we are talking about 5 90 minute sessions yes. right and uh one session per week correct one session per week yes yes great and the other really interesting thing is that for mindfulness this program you yourself did it from the university of berkeley yes i am trained from uh, university of berkeley california and uh, uh, this was a six weeks program that i did with them and obviously i have attended a couple of more courses with them uh, yeah so in terms of uh, credentials and credibility you don't have to worry and also coming from abhi bindu is i mean we we don't have to look back i mean any uh, when i see anything from mamta or anything from abhi bindu there is definitely because she does a lot of cross checks she before bringing it to her platform she does a lot of homework uh, that there is a lot of credibility credentials the facilitator everything so you don't have to worry about that uh okay so uh, before we get to more questions or closure of the session i have one last thing to also show you and practice with you which is called the seven point or uh, seven points of verochna or the sitting postures of verochna verochna is a sanskrit word which literally means uh, peace uh, we all do uh, meditation mindfulness breathing or exercises or कुछ ना कुछ हम लाइफ में कभी ना कभी करते हैं जिसके लिए हम अपने आप को एक पॉस्चर में बिठा कर करना पसंद करते हैं लाइक आई सेड दैट फॉर माइंडफुलनेस और फॉर टू थ्री टेक्निक्स यू डोंट हैव टू रियली फाइंड आउट एनी प्लेस और एनी एनी कॉर्नर बट इफ यू वांट टू प्रैक्टिस पीस इफ यू वांट टू रियली बिकम अ फॉलोअर ऑफ डूइंग दिस पॉस्चर माइंडफुलनेस 
breathing there's nothing better than seven points of uh, verochna let me just share the screen with you um it's here Okay, can you see the slides? Okay, thumbs ups. Okay, everybody can see the slide? Oh, so um, yeah, I can't see the slide yet. You can't? Okay, one second. Let me, I have to stop share then and then again share it, one second. Can you see now? No. Oh. Okay. I'm afraid. Why? One second. Last try. Let me just do a last try. Now? Mamta, can you see now? Uh, no. Oh, we cannot. Bharti is just going to try to guide you uh, here. Uh, okay, Bharti, I am just uh, doing the same thing. One second, play. Up, up, dekhte hain. Ek second, ek second. You just need to minimize this window. Up, dekho. Just now, can you just minimize this window? We are seeing this mindfulness wali window. Okay. Please, isko minimize kar uh, This one and this one. One second. Just minimize this window, Sonia. Yeah, I have I have done this. Now can you see? I am just opening this one. Now can you see? No, it's, not yet. It's, it's, uh, the screen is frozen. Is it? Yeah. Oh, one second. Just a second. Let me try one, one last time. Otherwise, I can just explain what seven points of Erochna is. One second. Um, just give me a sec, huh? We can see it now, Sonia. Okay, can you all see? Yeah. Okay, great. I'm just putting it on the main screen. Uh, okay, great. Great. So, uh, Seven point uh, Verochna, which is a very, very interesting technique of uh, dharana as a part of uh, mindfulness, is uh, basically a posture which, which is considered to have the greatest or I should say highest merits and virtues. Amongst many, many postures we might be aware of or we might have heard of, uh, whether originating from Hindu or other traditions, this this posture is considered to be the most superior and therefore in any way if you want to sit and relax and do your mindfulness practice or breathing uh, this is the posture we recommend and uh, don't worry it doesn't really come in just one go uh, we need to practice it over a period of time maybe for 21 days to get used to of the posture now what you need to do is uh, understand that we use seven body parts or as they say seven points of our body here in this posture. We need to just put our left hand under your right hand and we need to sit up straight and the first point is sit in the lotus position which is the Vajra posture. If you can't do uh, the, uh, the Sukhasan with both your toes up you can even sit in half lotus. The second point is to put your hands in your lap with your left hand under your right hand. The third point is to straighten your spine. Just straighten your spine so that you can feel your tailbone straight. 
The fourth is to naturally relax your shoulders. Your shoulders cannot be slouching. Your like sometimes what happens? Oh, my video was off. Is it? Okay. Like when I say that your shoulders have to be straight, so you can't sit like this or you can't sit like this. They have to be straight like this. So your level of shoulders with the level of ground has to be in the parallel. The fifth point is to slightly tilt your chin as you can read, not too forward or not too backward. So slightly chill. It can't be like this. It can't be like this. It can be. It, it is not erect. It's not straight, but it's slightly like this. Slightly tilt, slightly tilted. Then the sixth is to rest your eyes by gazing at the tip of your nose. Now, what does this mean? It means that your eyes are neither open, wide, like this, or they are neither closed. But they are, you're looking at the tip of your nose. So you're gazing with your eyes at the tip here. So some of you might feel that my eyes are closed, but they're not closed. They are gazing at the nose. And the seventh point is basically use your tongue or let your tongue touch the top of your palate. Okay? Like this. With your mouth closed. So if you're noticing that here, what you're using is your, your feet, your knees, your hands, your shoulder, your chin, your nose, your eyes, and your tongue, basically your mouth. So this is a very, very interesting, very, uh, uh, like I said, that most meritorious uh, uh, posture in Hinduism. It was uh, coined and uh, conceptualized by Buddha himself. Let me just stop sharing this. Yes. So it was uh, uh, conceptualized, conceived by Buddha himself. Now, again, the question is, this is just an explanation of the seven points of Vairochana, which means that seven point meditation, seven point mindfulness, seven point breathing, that how do you really sit? Which posture do we sit in to get the maximum benefit of your breathing? Now, the bigger question on why do we follow the seven points of Vairochana? Just because it's meritorious or because it's uh, considered to be of great virtues or it was coined by uh, Buddha himself? No. Now, the bigger question of why we always put our left hand under our right hand, why do we sit in the lotus position? Why do we have to keep our eyes open yet gazing at the nose tip? Each of these points has a significance. But like I said, everything cannot be covered in a 50-minute session. So what is this seven-point Vairochana meditation? Why do we follow the seven points of Vairochana as a posture is something which we'll cover in our workshop. And what significance each point has. We all must have heard somewhere about the seven chakras. Or we have heard about the seven chakras workshop Now, the question is, is there a correlation between these seven points and the seven chakras? But the answer you will find in the workshop. That why? Why do we follow this? And what is the relation between the seven points of Vairochana and seven chakras? Or is there any relation or not? Maybe there is no relation or maybe there is no correlation. So that's the, that's the point. Now, uh, I want to just leave you all with one very, very easy mindful breathing. Very easy mindful breathing. So even if you don't want to come for the workshop or you want to just take your own time, is something very simple. All you have to do is fold your hands, close your eyes, and take a very deep breath. Large, deep breath. And when you are going to exhale, you're going to move your hands like a snake crawls and you're going to take out the sound through your mouth with your 
closed mouth as so we'll inhale together and we'll exhale with our hands moving as snake and exhale sound as hiss okay one two three You can start with, you might see that your exhalation is for 7 seconds or 10 seconds or 20. Our objective is to do this every day to take it up to maybe 40 seconds or 60 seconds. This is the most simplest mindful breathing. I think with this, I will like to close my session with due permission from Mamta. Thank and you so much, yes, thank you so much. Informative and experiential session. You shared so many valuable tips and you opened a window in many of our hearts. And I'm sure there's a lot of curiosity to learn more because everyone who is here today is already on this journey of exploration. And um, we are all looking for how to deepen this practice and make it more meaningful, make it uh, longer lasting and have uh, value and uh, impact our lives positively. So I hope many of you will take this opportunity to join this course that Sonia will be offering through Abhibindu. Um, it's a matter of great irony that even for courses such as these, we have to go overseas to seek a certification, whereas all all of this comes culturally for, uh, from uh, uh, India. And so more and more of us, I think, should seize these opportunities to learn this. And like Sonia says, this will empower you not only to practice it, but also to use this in your, if you're in a corporate house, if you're a teacher, if you're a, a practitioner, facilitator, you'll be able to use these resources in your own courses and through your own um, uh, work profiles as well. So do, uh, we will be sending an email and I really hope that we get to see a lot of you out there. Thank you once again, Sonia, and thank you everyone for joining us today. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for writing in such wonderful comments in the chat window. I, like I promised, I am definitely going to read all of them because they're going to come as a recorded uh, version to me. But I am just, you know, thanking each and everyone to take out time as I said in the beginning, this is your me time. You invested in your own self for this one hour. And I hope I could add some bit of smile with a little bit of knowledge for you. For you. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you so much, Mamta, for having me uh, for this beautiful evening. It was a pleasure. Thank you. And we will be sharing the whole series. Yes, yes, Bye. yes. Okay. Are we good to go then? Absolutely. Thank okay. you. Great. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Love you.